Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to talk about the medicinal uses of echinacea, how to harvest or deadhead it, how to process it, and the practical applications of this herb. There are many varieties of echinacea um, because it is easily crossbred within its own family, which is the Asteraceae family. Um, but there are two main varieties that many herbalists use, and that is Echinacea augustifolia and Echinacea purpurea. This one is Echinacea purpurea, that is what I grow in my garden. They're identifying, they have a central cone that's typically brown or purple and surrounded by petal-like gray florets ranging from purple to pink and sometimes white. The leaves are lance shaped with rough texture. You'll notice that about the leaves, they're very rough and coarse, kind of like sandpaper. It will typically flower and bloom throughout the entire summer season. You don't necessarily have to deadhead your plant. Doing so does encourage it to continue to bloom. Also, this plant is crowding out my tomatoes, so no better reason to harvest it than that. I am selective on how I'm going to prune this plant. I have many hummingbirds that come and nurse off of the nectar of this plant, so I, I want to leave many intact because I like to feed the hummingbirds. Also, some of them are already kind of spent, um, so if they're on their way out, if they already are kind of looking like this, I'm going to leave it and let it dry out more uh, because the seeds are also great for birds. Finches love the seeds of echinacea, so I'm going to let it, let them go. And I can use them to reseed, so I will collect, I will let them completely dry into fall, and at that time I can uh, harvest the seeds for future use. For medicine, I like to use the ones that are fresh bloomed, that look really healthy. So the medicinal benefits of echinacea are largely used for when you get sick, when you get a viral cold. Energetically, it's cooling, so it helps reduce inflammation inside the body. It helps to stimulate your autoimmune response. And some studies have shown that it actually helps you produce more white blood cells. Um, so taken at the very first sign of a cold, um, or a virus, it can basically reduce the uh, duration, oops, sorry, no, right. can reduce the duration of that sickness because it is going to put your immune system into overdrive. It's a big bee, oh my goodness. I have not seen, ooh, this bumblebee is huge. I've never seen bumblebees here. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, let's see if I can get it. Where are you at? Line up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is why I don't want to get rid of all my echinacea. Can you guys see this bee? I don't can't zoom in on here. Oh, okay, okay, it left. Sorry, that was a side quest. So another great use for echinacea is to have it in your emergency first aid kit. It's traditionally been used in instances of snake bites. It is thought to slow down the spread of toxins and reduce the inflammation response. Now, of course, the first thing you want to do after that is go to the hospital. I by no means am I advocating for you to just take some echinacea and and, um, and be on your way, don't die, go to the hospital. But it's great for the emergency response. It is thought that the root of echinacea is the more potent part of the plant. However, the entire plant is medicinal. You can use the flowering head, leaves, and the stem all medicinally, both as a tea and a tincture. Now, I personally like to tincture the root because it is very potent and it's just not ideal for making tea. I make tea with the aerial parts, and that's what we are going to harvest today. So when deadheading, you're gonna wanna follow the stem down, and you're gonna wanna snip above the next flowering node. This is where the new growth is, right here. So where my finger is. This flower here, here's the top of it, it comes down. We're gonna wanna trim right here, right here, right above that node. So if you wanted to harvest the root, you need to harvest it in year after year three. You're gonna to wanna to take out the babies, replant those, and then just tincture the oldest, larger part of the root. Um, I use that, like I said, would be used for snake bites. Um, and you would drink the entire thing, back to the snake bite thing. You would drink, I would just drink the entire tincture in the emergency use like that, where I got bit by a venomous snake and then head to the hospital. But when I'm sick, I use the tincture pretty heavily as well. Um, a safe dose would be like, oh, you know, a dropper full, which is about 30 drops three times a day. Uh, you can learn how you respond to medicate, you know, your own herbal remedies. I'm gonna remind you guys that I'm not a doctor. I am not diagnosing, prescribing medication. 
I am just giving you information for you to make the best decisions of your own health. Echinacea is in a class of herbs that are considered immunostimulants that are meant to be used for short-term use for acute infections, and they work best when they are re-administered pretty frequently. So I would take them every few hours, maybe every three hours or so. And tincture, if you're unaware, tincture is basically extracting the medicinal, um, the medicinal properties into an alcohol base, alcohol water solution. Also just buy in commerce. I get it at Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, Oshala Farms has it, and um, Golden Poppy also, I believe, carries echinacea. It is great to grow your own echinacea um, in cultivation because it is being over-harvested in the wild. Um, I am against wild, at this time, uh, wild harvesting echinacea. Because of that, it's been over-harvested, but it's really easy to grow in your own garden. So just grow it yourself um, and leave it out in the wild so it can repopulate. So I harvested all of this. There's still plenty there for the hummingbirds and the pollinators, that big bumblebee that I keep seeing. I will go through and pull the leaves. There are many ways to dry your herbs. Uh, you can always bundle them in a bouquet, hang them upside down and let them dry that way. Um, that's not my favorite way because if the bundle's too big, sometimes they just don't dry properly and you get mildew and mold and you end up having to throw it all out. So on this day, I just simply separated the stems, leaves, and flower head. Um, and then I laid them out on my mesh herb dryer, which really works very quickly because it's so well ventilated. After it was dry, I went ahead and put the leaves and flower petals into a clean jar and labeled it. On this day, I didn't see a need to tincture anything because I already have plenty of echinacea root tincture. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been with echinacea. Have you tried any of the other immunostimulants for when you are sick? A lot of people love elderberry syrup. If you guys would like a video on that, let me know. And of course, if you found this video helpful, Please like and subscribe and we can grow, harvest, and heal together.